At exactly midnight on October 1, 2025, NASA's official voice vanishes. The agency's homepage declares a government shutdown just as 3i slash Atlas, only the third interstellar visitor ever detected, enters its once-in-a-lifetime window for Mars observation. Public data streams cut to black at the very hour the cosmos delivers its rarest messenger, leaving only European orbiters and silent American eyes tracking a comet millions of kilometers from home. Was this outage a perfect bureaucratic storm or something more? When the stakes are this cosmic and the silence this total, what aren't we seeing? And how does anyone separate coincidence from cover-up? The clock has started and the receipts are about to be tested. A rare visitor from beyond the solar system does not wait for human calendars. In the pre-dawn hours of October, as the world's most powerful space agency falls silent, a fragment of another star's debris cloud crosses the Martian orbit. Three times in recorded history, astronomers have confirmed an interstellar object passing through our neighborhood. Each arrival separated by years, each one a statistical outlier in a universe of repeating patterns. The odds are staggering, billions of comets and asteroids shaped by the sun, yet only a handful ever trace a path that cannot be explained by any known planet or belt. The value of this moment is not measured in press releases or trending hashtags. It is measured in the way light bends through a foreign coma, in the chemistry that betrays a birthplace far colder or more violent than anything in our system, in the chance to watch a true outsider interact with a familiar planet. For a brief window, Mars, usually a backdrop for robotic explorers, becomes the solar system's best observatory. From its vantage, the geometry is perfect. The visitor's path sweeps within 30 million kilometers, close enough for orbiters to track subtle changes in brightness, color, and speed, far enough to avoid any risk to hardware. The world's science communities know what's at stake. Every previous interstellar object, Oumuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, left behind more questions than answers. Oumuamua tumbled out of sight before anyone could agree on its shape or even its true nature. Borisov, though more conventional, still challenged comet models with its composition and speed. Now, with a third candidate, the opportunity to compare, to test, to challenge old theories is in reach. The timing is razor thin. The Mars window opens for only a week, with the closest approach on October 3rd. After that, the comet slips toward the sun, lost in the glare, unreachable by even the largest telescopes on Earth. For planetary scientists, a single night's loss can erase a year's planning. A missed spectrum, a gap in the light curve, a failed pointing sequence. Each one narrows the margin for discovery. The stakes are not just scientific. In a world where information travels instantly, the absence of official updates creates a vacuum. Rumors multiply. Questions about what is known, what is being hidden, and who controls the story become as urgent as the data itself. The silence of a shutdown is not just a bureaucratic oddity. It is a stress test for public trust in science. The next seven days will decide whether this rare encounter becomes a milestone of discovery or a chapter of missed chances and speculation. July 1st, 2025. A new object appears in the nightly search logs of the Atlas survey in Chile. Its orbit, calculated from a handful of early positions, refuses to close. Each new measurement stretches the curve further from the sun, hinting at a visitor not bound to any planet. Over the next three months, observatories across the globe feed in data, right ascension, declination, photometric points, until the trajectory is pinned down. The result? A hyperbolic path inbound from interstellar space, inbound toward the inner solar system. October 1st to 7th. The Mars observation window opens. For exactly one week, the geometry lines up. The interstellar object sweeps through a corridor just 30 million kilometers from Mars, about 0.19 astronomical units. Mars, usually a silent outpost for robotic explorers, becomes the best seat in the solar system. 
Orbiters and landers adjust their schedules, prioritizing observation slots, ready to catch whatever signatures this outsider might reveal. The window is tight, miss it, and the opportunity vanishes for decades. October 3rd, closest approach to Mars. The object passes at its minimum distance, a point source of light skimming the red planet's sky. No telescope on Mars or Earth can resolve the nucleus at this range. What can be measured are changes in brightness, subtle color shifts, the shape and extent of the coma, and any hint of unusual chemistry in the light it reflects. Every second counts. Each observation adds a line to the growing ledger of interstellar encounters. October 29th to 30th, Perihelion. The comet rounds the Sun at a distance of 1.36 astronomical units, about 204 million kilometers. At this point, the object is lost in solar glare from Earth's perspective. Mars has already lost its vantage. Only spacecraft positioned far from the Sun's blinding light, like ESA's Juice at Jupiter, have a shot at catching the peak of outgassing and activity. For ground-based astronomers, the wait begins. Late November to December, the object reappears from behind the Sun. Telescopes on Earth, now clear of the solar conjunction, scramble to reacquire it. The light curve resumes. Spectrographs hunt for lingering traces of exotic chemistry. Each new data point is checked against predictions, searching for any sign that this visitor breaks the rules written by the first two interstellar objects. The timeline closes, not with a press release, but with a checklist. Discovery, Mars window, closest pass, perihelion, reappearance. Every date stamped, every distance logged, every observation ready to be verified. Inside the Mars science community, every asset and operator finds their role defined by the clock and the sky. ESA's campaign order goes out first. Mars Express and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter are both tasked for the week, with their science leads at ESOI and ESTEC clearing schedules for high-cadence comet tracking. The HRSC and CASIS teams load new pointing commands each sequence calculated to maximize coverage as 3i slash Atlas sweeps past at 30 million kilometers, a distance that turns even the most powerful camera into a glorified photon counter. On the NASA side, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise and CRISM teams receive last-minute observation windows, their requests logged by the project office but held behind a firewall of legal silence. MAVEN's IUVs group pivots from atmospheric studies to cometary UV emissions, working from pre-approved contingency plans. The Red Watch crew, NASA's term for the skeleton staff authorized to keep flight operations running, spend the early hours of October first confirming telemetry, cross-checking instrument health, and logging every command twice. They are the ones who stay on shift when the rest of the agency is furloughed, their names absent from press briefings but present in every operations log. Across the globe, the Chinese Tianwen-1 team at BACC and the UAE's HOPE mission controllers at MBRSC join the campaign. HIRIC, MORIC, EXI, all high-resolution images, are assigned to grab as many astrometric and photometric points as bandwidth allows. Each approval is routed through national science boards, each exposure a small gamble on weather, spacecraft health, and the unpredictable brightness of an interstellar visitor. On the ground, citizen astronomers like Priya Ralo, whose backyard discovery of a light curve anomaly first drew attention to Atlas's odd behavior, watch from afar, submitting real-time measurements to the Minor Planet Center. Their data, though less precise, fill gaps left by institutional constraints and reinforce the sense that no single agency owns the sky. Every observer, from ESA's operations directors to the Red Watch's overnight crew, works within the same razor-thin margin. One week, one chance, no guarantee of a second look. The infrastructure is global, the protocols are strict, and the human element, silent, mostly invisible, remains the common thread running through every data point that will outlast the blackout. At precisely 12.01 a.m. on October 1st, the Anti-Deficiency Act asserts itself with the force of federal law shutting down NASA's public voice in a single sweeping motion. Every digital channel, websites, mission blogs, social media feeds, press offices, and automated news tickers falls silent. 
The statute, born out of a need for fiscal restraint rather than any cosmic agenda, prohibits federal agencies from obligating funds beyond what Congress has approved. The language is blunt, no money, no work, unless that work is essential to protect life or property. For NASA, this exception carves out a narrow corridor. Flight operations, those vital to safeguarding billion-dollar spacecraft and the data they gather, are allowed to continue, but only behind a firewall of silence. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MAVEN, and every other US-operated probe remain fully functional, their commands relayed through protected circuits, their telemetry flowing to mission control. Yet, outside those walls, the blackout is total. Hundreds of furlough notices are dispatched to inboxes overnight. Outreach teams, education specialists, and public affairs officers are locked out of their accounts, forbidden by law from posting so much as a status update. The Red Watch crew, classified as accepted personnel, work through the shutdown under strict contingency plans. Every shift documented, every handover notarized, every action logged. The firewall is absolute. Data are archived, not shared. Health checks are performed, but not announced. Even the most routine milestones, pointing sequences, instrument calibrations, data downlinks, are recorded in internal logs, invisible to the outside world. The official website banner is stark. NASA is currently closed due to a lapse in government funding. For those outside the agency, the effect is immediate and complete. No new images, no press briefings, no live commentary as an interstellar object brushes past Mars. The silence is not a glitch, nor is it a deliberate attempt to conceal. It is the direct outcome of legal code, enforced by shutdown protocol, that draws a hard line between the mechanics of planetary discovery and the story told to the public. The data continue to flow, but the narrative, at least for now, remains suspended, paused by statute rather than by science. For seven days, the world's sharpest telescopes orbiting Mars become photon counters aimed at a single unresolved point. Every asset, ESA's Mars Express, ExoMars TGO, NASA's MRO and MAVEN, China's Tianwen-1, UAE's HOPE, works from pre-approved scripts, logging astrometry, broadband photometry, and, if luck allows, a faint trace of gas in the coma. The nucleus itself remains hidden, smaller than a pixel, no matter how long the exposure. What comes back are light curves, brightness rising and falling with the object's spin, color data hinting at ice or dust, spectra chasing the faintest signature of carbon, water, or something stranger. Each measurement is a single data point, waiting to be stitched into a narrative only after the blackout lifts. Outside the mission archives, the vacuum of official updates becomes its own kind of signal. Social media threads fill with speculation, some reasoned, some wild. Screenshots of ESA's last pre-shutdown blog post circulate alongside grainy plots from amateur photometry. Hashtags trend, hashtag Mars window, hashtag Atlas blackout, hashtag 3i or not 3i. Rumors multiply in the absence of detail. Some claim the silence hides a discovery, an anomalous spectrum, a trajectory that doesn't fit. Others insist it's just bureaucracy at work, a shutdown with unfortunate timing. The observational ceiling is clear. No camera at Mars can resolve the nucleus. No spectrometer can pull out more than the brightest gas lines and only if the coma flares. Photometric data, astrometric positions, and low signal-to-noise ratio spectra are the full extent of what the hardware can deliver at this range. Every missing update, every unexplained gap, becomes fuel for new theories. The rumor life cycle is short and relentless. A single ambiguous post can spark hundreds of replies, each one further from the facts on file in the mission logs. As the week wears on, the ledger fills with raw numbers, but the story outside the firewall is shaped by uncertainty. The next phase, sorting natural anomaly from narrative invention, will depend on how these fragments hold up when the blackout ends and the receipts go public. Six explanations compete for the ledger of what happened as the Mars window closed under silence. The first, and by far the most likely, is bureaucratic coincidence. A government shutdown timed by fiscal calendars, not by cosmic events, intersecting with a rare but natural encounter. 
The second looks to the environment, solar wind or a Martian atmospheric anomaly interfering with data, a blip that could mimic a gap in coverage. Third is the speculative outlier, an unusually massive or metal-rich nucleus, the kind that would light up a spectrum or bend a trajectory in ways no comet from the Sun's family ever has. The fourth, black-budget data capture, leans on the idea of classified science, operations running in parallel, logged in places the public cannot see. Fifth comes the third-party intercept, technology beyond any known agency, a scenario with no evidence and no precedent. The sixth, and most extraordinary, is engineered artifact, an object built, not born, crossing the solar system under a disguise of dust and ice. Each step along this chain demands more proof, more receipts, more rigor. The receipts checklist is built for audit, not argument. Start with minor planet center, orbital updates, hyperbolic elements, eccentricity, and velocity posted in public logs. ESA's Mars Express and ExoMars TGO data. Drops, raw images, spectra, pointing logs, and exposure times, all archived in the Planetary Science Archive. NASA's post-shutdown archives, every command, every downlink, every gap explained in the mission logs. Post-conjunction light curves and spectra from ground-based telescopes cross-checked against predictions. Consistency across agencies, Mars, Earth, and Jupiter means a smooth hyperbolic orbit, ordinary cometary volatiles, and no unexplained accelerations. A smoking gun would be a Doppler anomaly, a trajectory that refuses to fit, or spectral lines that defy known chemistry. Anything less is noise, not signal. The standard for anomaly is strict. Coherent Doppler or trajectory deviations, non-cometary spectral lines, or datasets that cannot be reconciled across independent observers. Anything that survives this gauntlet moves from rumor to record. The rest, gaps in the light curve, missing images, ambiguous spectra, are the normal scars of a campaign run at the edge of what is possible, not evidence of suppression. The receipts, when released, will decide which story holds. Throughout the seven-day blackout, Mars-based assets like the European Space Agency's Mars Express and ExoMars continued their campaigns, while NASA missions remained operational but silent by law. No credible evidence emerged of interference beyond the documented shutdown protocols. Yet, the absence of real-time data fueled speculation, highlighting how routine policy and rare cosmic events can collide to amplify rumors. The receipts checklist remains. The European Space Agency's published Mars data, minor planet center, orbital updates, and NASA's post-shutdown logs will confirm or refute any anomalies. As of now, all publicly available data show a smooth hyperbolic trajectory and ordinary cometary behavior. Some questions about possible anomalies or classified findings remain unanswered until further releases. This episode tested scientific transparency and public trust. Silence does not equal suppression, but the records, not the rumors, will decide what history remembers.